Have you ever wondered what the origins are of common foods we eat today? Most of the foods found in the grocery store at one point were much smaller, bitter, sour, and unpalatable. Let's get into this. First off, we have number 10, corn. Tasty, sweet, plump corn fresh off the cob wasn't always like this. Going back 9,000 years ago, corn was an easy crop to grow and peel, but didn't offer up all that much. The wild teal sinnet, or wild corn, was made up of only 1.6% sugar as compared to today's corn is 6.6%. Not only sweeter, today's corn is a thousand times larger. This all changed in the 15th century when European settlers started the cultivation of corn. You can see through time how the corn started from a single strand of kernels to a longer cluster corn kernels to the full cob of corn we have today. From here, corn has grown all over the world with numerous different varieties, of different shapes and colors like you can see here. I currently have 16 different types of rare unusual corn varieties you'll have to subscribe to see in upcoming videos as they become ripe. Out of all the different varieties of corn, this one, the striped japonica, is the only one with a different type of husk. Number 9, Pineapple. Grown in vast quantity in Hawaii and Costa Rica, the world's favorite tropical fruit, the pineapple, has humble beginnings. With its origin not definitively known, the pineapple is thought to have come from Paraguay or southern Brazil. The bromelia penguin, the original plant is a 4 foot or 1.2 meter tall bromelia that yields small yellow fruit that tastes like a very acidic pineapple. This fruit is so acidic that it is not recommended to eat it raw, but rather cook it. For those who do consume it raw, it's advised you dilute it with water or another fruit like banana blended to be able to palate its acidity. The acidity is so strong it'll cause mouth, lip, and throat burn, which only happens with a common pineapple if it is consumed when the outer skin is green and unripe. Along with the round orbs of fruit, the wild pineapple flowers and young leaves can be cooked and eaten as well. These flowers can produce up to 10 to 75 round fruits per harvest as compared to a common pineapple which ends up fusing together all of these to create one large fruit. While the common pineapple tropical gold was the final result of cultivation of the bromelia penguin, other different varieties were also created like the red wild pineapple. Anasis bracteatus. Still very acidic, it wasn't until recently that this pineapple was cultivated to be edible and delicious with edible skin. I could talk pineapple all day, so I think I'll save the numerous amazing varieties for another video. Number 8. Carrot. The carrot wasn't always a sweet and tasty treat. Originating from Daucus carota or Queen Anne's lace, this small bush produces one gnarly fibrous carrot. Crushing both the stem and the leaves will emit a carrot odor, yet these carrot tops are not edible like the common carrot of today. The wild carrot is much more pale and yellowish in color and devoid of any taste you'd really want to put in your mouth. I know because I tried it. The only way to eat the wild carrot is to boil it for many, many hours until it's finally soft. It should only be consumed when young as the woody texture that develops is due to the high content of xylem tissue. Named after Queen Anne of England, an expert lace maker, the wild carrot is thought to have originated on the Iranian Plateau, a region that includes Afghanistan, Iran, and Pakistan. Cultivated in Central Asia 1100 years ago, it's taken countless seasons in the garden to cultivate the delicious carrot we know today, not to mention the many unusual varieties like the two I have growing here, which will be featured on my top 10 food series. This wild carrot I just pulled out of my neighbor's yard. Oh, it smells really good, like a really good carrot, but. <laughs> Number seven, the peach. Peach, we all know it and love it, but its origin isn't completely known. The common fuzzy peach's name, Prunus persica, suggests they come from Persia or Iran, but recent studies show they originated from China. The common peach does have a history of growing there since 4000 BCE, where they were small like the size of a cherry. Having waxy skin, 64% edible flesh, and the remaining 36% being the stone, the wild peach had an earthy, sweet and sour taste with a salty twist like a lentil. Common peach is 64 times larger, has soft fuzzy skin, and 90% edible flesh with only 10% of it being the stone. If we take this a step further, it looks as if the wild peach of China could have originated from Australia, more specifically the Huangdong. 
Guangdong or wild peach as it's called is most definitely older than the wild peach of China. Going back 40 million years, fossilized Guangdongs have been found in coal seams of southern Victoria and Australia, which shows clearly that the Guangdong came first, but with the lackluster time machines we have today, we likely won't truly know. Guangdong grows on a shrub up to 20 feet or 6 meters versus the common peach grows on a tree up to 25 feet or 7.5 meters. While they differ from shrub to tree, their heights are very similar. Where they are completely different is their macronutrient breakdown. The Guangdong is made up of 50% fat, which is incredibly unique for a fruit, the remaining going to carbohydrate and protein, where the common peach is 87% carbs, 8% protein, and only 5% fat. The common peach enjoys hot summer heat but a cool period to enact a chemical reaction to make it thrive, where the Guangdong is found in central and southern deserts of Australia where it is scorching hot and relies on being a hemiparasitic plant or one that uses the root system of another to pull the nutrition it needs. Number 6. Raspberry First mentioned in the Herbal Medicine English book published in 1548, the raspberry is indigenous to Asia and North America. It's believed that the people of Troy gathered wild raspberries from the foothills of Mount Ida in Turkey. In medieval Europe, the wild raspberry was used for food but also medicinally in paintings and illuminated manuscripts. This berry was only for royalty of the time, but in 18th century cultivation spread this berry across Europe. In 1761, George Washington moved his estate to Mount Vernon where raspberry cultivation began in his garden. A hundred years later, by 1867, there were 40 different varieties. Along with the increase in size, as you can see these wild raspberries are quite small, the taste was also improved. While raspberry has a sour taste, which I personally enjoy, but on the opposite spectrum of the sweet raspberries found in grocery stores today. The most common raspberry varieties are Nova Taylor, Latham, Boyne, and Autumn Bliss. Ever-bearing varieties like this one here, which I'm not sure what type it is, will produce three harvests a year all the way into December. Number 5. Strawberry Mentioned in ancient Roman literature, the wild strawberry has been used medicinally as they were small, tough, and lacking flavor. From the 1300s to the end of the 1500s, the Fragaria vesca and Fragaria moschata, the two varieties of strawberries in Europe, started to make their way out of the wilderness and into the gardens. Charles V was one of the first kings of France to demand strawberries be in the royal garden. In the 1600s, the Virginia strawberry, Fragaria virginiana, was brought to Europe but was unappreciated by most. English gardeners got to work creating 30 new varieties from these three original varieties of strawberries. The moment the strawberry went from a tiny wild strawberry like we see here to the huge delicious ones we all know and love today is when a French spy brought back a Chilean strawberry, Fragaria chiloensis. This native strawberry to Chile lacked production of berries per plant but produced large fruit. They're only able to grow in mild coastal climates making them not ideal for many places around the world. The Virginia strawberry and the Chilean strawberry were then crossed to create the Fragaria ananasus the common strawberry we eat today. Americans Charles Hoovey and James Wilson developed their own varieties that would grow in any type of soil which increased strawberry production 50 times to 100,000 acres. Number 4. Plum Found within archaeological sites dating back to Neolithic times, the plum may have been one of the first fruits domesticated by humans. The three most abundant cultivars are only found near human settlements. Prunus domestica has been traced back to Eastern Europe. Prunus salinica and Prunus simoni from Asia. Caspian Sea and China are more specifically where they grew, dating back to at least 2,000 years. Prunus domestica made its way to Europe somehow. We think it was carried to Rome around 200 BC, where others say the Duke of Anjou took them home as he returned from Jerusalem at the close of the 5th century. They eventually made their way to New York in 1737 and Quebec around 1771. Prunus salinica or the Japanese plum made its way from China to Korea and Japan where it became popular. Prunus simony or the apricot plum features dark red flesh that clings to the seed much like an apricot and offers a bitter taste to it most of the time. In perfect conditions they do taste good but not normally but they always smell good. Luther Burbank, an American botanist responsible for developing more than 800 strains and varieties of plants, used both the Japanese plum and apricot plum to create new and wonderfully smelling and tasting plums such as Climax, Maynard, 
Chalco, Santa Rosa, and Formosa. Number three, avocado. South Central Mexico was the birthplace of the avocado between 7000 and 5000 BC, but it would be many millennia before they would be cultivated by humans. Domesticated avocado seeds were found buried within Incan mummies dating back to 750 BC and evidence has been found of avocado cultivation in Mexico around 500 BC. The original avocados, as you can see, were not exactly the most abundant fruit. Consisting of mostly seed, these avocados wouldn't exactly add that thick layer of avo on your toast. The original name of this fruit or vegetable, whatever you consider an avocado, is aguacate, but because the Spanish conquistadors couldn't pronounce it, they changed the English name to avocado. The first English language mention of the avocado was by Sir Henry Sloan in 1696, to which he called it the alligator pear tree. Number two, pumpkin. Dating back 8,000 to 10,000 years, as far as we know, the pumpkin or wild pumpkin came from the Oaxaca highlands of Mexico. Carbon dating done on the seeds found in the Guila Natquitz cave gives us the origin of the pumpkin as far back as possible, along with much younger bean and maize samples being 2,000 to 5,000 years old. The wild pumpkin or Cucurbita pepo is comprised of two molecularly divergent groups that on their own had already differentiated through geographical isolation many years before humans domesticated them. Cucurbita pepo naturally split into the Cucurbita pepo pepo and Cucurbita pepo ophirifera. The pepo family includes pumpkin, zucchini, and other marrow squashes, where the ophvera family includes acorn, crookneck, and scallop squash, and most ornamental gourds. The Greek word pepon, or large melon, was changed by the French into Pompon, which was changed by the English into Pompion, which was changed by the American colonists into Pumpkin. Number one, jackfruit. My personal favorite, the jackfruit didn't start off as the heaviest fruit on earth. Cultivated varieties today can weigh in over 100 pounds or 45 kilograms, but it wasn't always this way. Yarocarpus hirsutus, jungle jack or wild jackfruit, was the true origin of the fruit. At full size, they're only as big as a softball which shows you how far the jackfruit has really come. Originating in the rainforest of western gnats of India, this fruit spread across Southeast Asia and the Philippines. In 1782, plants from a captured French ship on their way to Martinique were taken to Jamaica, where it is now a common fruit to be found. From here, the jackfruit made its way up to Florida and Hawaii, but it still isn't all that common on the Hawaiian islands. I should note here too, on the northern part of Oahu, on the outside of Turtle Bay Resort, is a roadside market that sells a variety called ice cream jackfruit, which is still to this day my favorite bite of fruit I've ever consumed. This was eight years ago, so let's hope they're still growing this jackfruit there. If you enjoyed this video, you'll like the previous episode on the poisonous potato fruit, so check it out, and until the next one, have a good one.